Hey there, welcome to Family Engagement Challenge, how to include every family in your PTA. So let's get started because we only have 30 minutes. So yikes, I'm gonna talk really fast, but if you, if we'll uh, summarize at the end. Okay, so my name is Melissa Cancro. I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator here at New York State PTA. And there is my email down at the bottom of the screen. So here's my why. Um, I was the programs coordinator for three years before this, and now I'm in family engagement. I live in Yorktown Heights, which is in Westchester County, New York. And this is my family, my husband, Art, um, my son, Wesley, who is 20 and is in community college right now. And then my daughter, Samantha, who is 15, and she is a sophomore at Yorktown High School. So a little bit about myself. Um, I, when I was growing up, we moved around a lot. We moved eight times between I was zero and 22. And the longest we stayed anywhere was seven years. So we really didn't have a connection with the PTA or the community because we just kept moving around. And I'm not a native New Yorker. So when I came up here, people kept talking about the Regents Diploma and Regents. And I had no idea what they were talking about because in Pennsylvania, we didn't have Regents. So I kept asking things like, what is a Regents? And what is your normal diploma called? So um, I kind of stumbled into PTA. My son was diagnosed with autism at the age of two and a half. And so around when he was in second grade, we were struggling and my neighbor invited me to go to a SEPTA meeting. A SEPTA is a special education PTA. Um, they serve the needs of special needs students and their parents. And if you don't have a SEPTA, maybe you have a special needs committee. But if you don't have either, make sure to start one. <laughs> That's my little plug. Um, so at the time, I was going through a school system I didn't really understand or experience. And then my son was really, um, the school district wasn't, it's not made for autistic kids. So it's a little bit difficult. We were having trouble. So I walked away from that meeting with two new mentors and apparently a new title, which was co-vice president. And uh, yeah, so some of you may know how it feels to walk into a meeting and then immediately become an officer. Um, it was a little weird and, but you know, that's how you get into PTA sometimes. So here we are. So I really believe that it's important for families, teachers, administrators, and school board members, and anyone in a child's life to work together for the good of that kid. And I would have made it through my son's experience in school without partnering with the school. And actually now my daughter is having some, you know, issues with anxiety and with um, depression. And so it's really important for me to be partnering with her school too. So let's get really back to the family part. I'm gonna click here. So families look different, right? Uh, they, they come in all shapes and sizes. Um, but I just want to remind you that um, sometimes we we get focused on the moms or the dads, and then we kind of forget that kids are being raised by all different kinds of people. They have stepmoms and step dads. They have two dads. They have two moms. Um, another group that we don't always think about is grandparents. Um, right now, according to the Center for Disease Control, about 3% of children nationwide live apart from their parents. And two thirds of these kids are being raised by their grandparents. So that means about 2.6 grandparents in this country are raising their, their grandchildren because of different reasons. Sometimes it's job loss, military deployment. Sometimes it's you know, mental illness, divorce. Uh, there's incarceration, substance abuse, and even death. So there's a lot of kids out there that are living um, without a parent. There's also um, kids that are in the foster care system. So, uh, and so the childwelfare.gov site said in September of 2018 that there is over 400,000 kids in foster care. Now they could be in foster care with a relative or they could be in a foster care with a guardian, someone who's not related to them or a group home or a bunch of other different circumstances. So. The point is, when we say families, we need to broaden that a little bit to include everyone who is working with children, who is working for their well-being. So how do we do this in PTA? For example, my aunt is now raising her grandchild um, because my cousin is not able to. And so she is trying to navigate 
um, computers, which she's not great at, and she's in math and a fifth grader. And it's been a long time since she had to do all these things. Um, so she would love it if a PTA would reach out and say, hey, Linda, can you come to this meeting? We're going to have it on math and we're going to answer all your math questions. She would just like be so happy. So here's the thing. You could do that for, you can ask to have like, there's people struggling with fifth grade math, sixth grade math, 10th grade math. I don't do with my daughter because it's too hard for me. <laughs> I'm not great at math. So just ask the math department. Do they have somebody that they could do a, like a Zoom meeting with the parents? Or maybe there's a kid in the honor society who's a whiz at math and be like, could you help us, help us tutor? Um, they can meet via a virtual, via Zoom or meets, or they could you know, meet outside in the park. Or kids are great with technology. Could they make some videos for your PTA about like math tutorials or different, different subjects? Because these kids are so much better with technology than like I am. So just think about the things we're doing. Like we have things like daddy, daddy daughter dances or, you know, mom, son things. You don't have to cancel them, just widen them. Make it, you know, daughter's choice um, because maybe not every daughter has a, a dad in her life, but maybe she'd like to bring her uncle or, you know, her grandfather or, you know, somebody else that's important in her life. Um, just branch it out a little bit. So these kids, because they already feel kind of, um, alone and kind of different when we don't want to enforce that um, even though we're being well-meaning you know we're, it's a good event but we want to make sure that we're including everyone so let's get on to the why why is family engagement so important well it's important because families kids who have families that are engaged have higher grades they have increased attendance some of them may find school more enjoyable because their parents and teachers are working together to find solutions to their issues. Some students are more likely to post, go to a post-secondary education like college or a successful career. Stumbling over my words, it's okay. And some families and schools become a true community. And that's really is the goal. The other reason why it's so, so important is because it's part of the law. Right, so um, family engagement, New York State or National PTA put out this family engagement in the law, and this is at the end of the presentation. So you will be getting a copy of the PowerPoint, so don't panic. There will be a link there to this. But um, it's part of the Every Student Succeeds Act, or you, it's commonly known as ESSA. So this was passed back in 2015 by uh, President Obama. And part, it calls for parents to be meaningfully and consult meaningfully involved and consulted in the development of state and school districts educational plans. And I like this uh, thing because it says here, uh, right in the national PTA form, schools would need to increase their spending by a thousand dollars per pupil to gain the same results as an effective family engagement. So that's amazing, right? you're saving them money. So if your school isn't engaging you, say you can maybe save a lot of money if you, you know, reach out to us. Also, if you're Title I school, I'm gonna read it right from the form so I don't mess it up. School districts with high percentages of students and families that are below the poverty line, including, need to include a written and parent family engagement policy in their education plan that welcomes all families and seeks to strengthen the partnerships between families, the school, and the community to improve student outcomes. And they need to spend at least 1% of their Title I funds for family engagement activities. These funds can be used to support professional development for educators on family engagement, home visiting programs, and other activities to support family engagement that are consistent with the school district's parent and family engagement policy. So I just wanted to read that right from there so I get it accurately and correctly. So let's move on to the national standards of family and school partnerships. So the first one is welcoming all families. We want to be welcoming, communicating effectively, um, because we want to get the words out and we want to get it accurate. We want our families to know what we're doing. Supporting student success. We want to support our students' success and we want to support everyone's 
student success. When you start in PTA, you start because it's something to do with your kid, but then you want to, you develop feelings, you know, and you want to help their friends and then you want to help your district and then you want to help your region and your state and hopefully it grows to national and worldwide. Speaking up for every child, you speak up for your child's issue, but helping other people speak up for theirs. It's not always easy to learn how to be an advocate, but you can help each other. Sharing the power, which means, you know, not everybody, not the administrator doesn't, administration doesn't hold all the power, that the families have some say and vice versa. So you have mutual respect between the shareholders. Collaborating with the community. The community is huge. There are tons of organizations out there that are struggling because of COVID and they love kids and their whole thing is for kids too. We tend to do things in a silo. We're like, this is our event, but what if we connected with the local library and have a super duper big literacy event and do it together and go out in the community. And then the community sees what the PTA does and shows that it has value. What if we partnered with the local theaters that are out of work right now or the music or the arts, like partner with your community because it's twofold. You get help and they understand what you do and they become advocates for you. So that's my spiel. So four points of transformative family engagement. There's inclusive, which means embracing and valuing diverse perspectives, individualized, meeting unique needs of every family and child, integrated, connecting and aligning with the educational system, impactful, empowering families to support their child's success. So let's dive into this. So the first one is, is, um, inclusive, which means intentional relationship building. So you want to get out there and get to know those families, right? And you might want to get some feedback from them. And uh, we assume a lot of things about families, about why they don't come to our events. But here's the thing, we never ask them, right? We always forget to say, hey, what do you think about this? Um, and that's a little scary because, you know, some of these events are things that we put our heart and soul into and we don't want to hear the criticism. But guess what? PTAs are run by their membership, um, even state PTAs. It should be membership driven. So we should want to know what they have to say. So to make it a little less scary, it comes into this building relationships with them, getting to know them, having them know you so they know who you are, who your board is, what are your goals for the, this year as PTA, what is important, what's your mission. Once they know that, they get to know a little bit about you, then it's just easier because they'll respond more favorably if they know what's going on. Now, usually we did this during meetings or we track them down during events. It gets a little tricky with COVID, right? Um, but you could do it, make time in your virtual meetings because you could say, um, you know, let's just get a little get to know you time, 10 minutes. Okay, everybody tells me your name, what grades your kids are, and, you know, what's your favorite TV show and what you'd like to see happen this year, or, or what are some of your questions about the school? It can be as simple as that. Um, have a buddy system. If a new family comes in, um, partner them up with an a family that's been there. I almost said an older family, more experienced family. That's the best term, more experienced family. It can be as easy as an email and say, hey, you know, um, welcome to our school. And here's, here's, my name is, you know, Melissa, and I've been here for a while. And I'd love to answer any questions you have, offer them resources, maybe give them a quick tip like, oh, you know, that trying to pick up your kid. I find that it's easier to come at like 2.15 and you know, get right in line and you'll be zipping right out. Like little things that you know about the school that maybe a new person wouldn't know. In your meetings, don't use jargon, okay? We use a lot of jargon in special ed, like IEPs, 504s, triennials, vowels. What does that mean? Um, so one day I was talking with my sister about Wesley and what was going on with him. And I realized halfway through the conversation, I used a bunch of jargon, which I, it was new to me. And I was surprised that I had picked it up so well. And my mom was interpreting. But how annoying is that when you're sitting in a meeting and you don't know what they're talking about? So make sure that you explain things to everybody so they know what you're talking about, why you do the things you do. And then make sure to include 
diverse perspectives is all you know what are the languages that are spoken in your school district ask your school administration office hey what are the top five languages make sure to put your stuff out in the top five languages so right down here we have this email translation at newyorkstatepta.org you can send your stuff there and they have a copier that can translate into like over a hundred languages i forget how many and be like, hey, I need this in Arabic, or hey, I need this in Chinese, in Mandarin Chinese, or hey, I need this in Spanish. Can you, you know, run this through for me? And also, your meetings. If you're, you know, if you have a high Spanish population in your community, and you're just speaking English, that's not inclusive. So try to find somebody to translate. Um, you can ask like your foreign language department if they have anyone they could send over, or is there a high school student that's really good who could get community service hours, or contact your local um, community college, or maybe um, you have an agency um, in the area that works with um, different kinds of diverse people, ask them, do you have any translators, do you know of anybody, just keep asking. Um, and also look at the things you're doing like for example if your fall festival is at four o'clock on a friday at the school is that the best place for it to be is that the best time four o'clock maybe that's what your committee decided but is that the best time for your parents because four o'clock some parents aren't out of work and some parents are still picking up their other kids from the elementary schools their younger kids right maybe the school isn't the most central place to have something like that Maybe it's a, a hike. Maybe people can't get there by car because they don't have a car. So make sure it's an essentialized location. Trying to make sure that we're meeting everyone's needs is so important. So moving on to the next one, it is individualized. So one of the things that we, uh, I wanted, just wanted to go back to the, um, the, inclusion. One of the things we do, we don't include people because we're scared that we're going to mess up. And we do. Everybody messes up. And it's, you know, sometimes you botch a translation or you just apologize. Um, you, you, you know, you take responsibility, you apologize, you correct what you can and move on. Um, but again, people will be more forgiving if they know that you're really just trying to make it more inclusive. Um, and they might even help you. Um, but don't be afraid to do something because you're afraid you're going to make a mistake. All right, so back to individualized. Um, this is um, personal invoca invitations, tailored experiences, and being responsible. Invite people to join your PTA. People I like to be asked personally. They don't like the mass emails, like because that's very off-putting. So if you can send a personalized email, some email systems allow you to put people's names in it. Some do not. Um, if you need to send out letters, maybe put their name on top. You can write it in and have a volunteer do that for you. Um, ask them how they like to be communicated with. Do they like emails? Do they like text? What's easier for them? And tailor the experience. So right now, like mental health is huge. Like we are in a pandemic. We've been in it for seven months. We are all out of adrenaline and we're all exhausted. And so if you weren't anxious before, most people are now a little bit anxious. <laughs> Anxiety is rising. So have a Zoom about mental health. Invite um, your school psychologist, your school social workers. If, if they can't come, ask them who in the area could you invite to talk about like how to help your kids. Make it, that's really a helpful experience with them. If you're doing something, um, and I like this idea about um, if you have a meeting, maybe, and you have a couple subjects, maybe putting out the agenda. So the parents who maybe don't have enough time to sit over a two hour meeting can come just for the section that they need. So like say, have mental health from seven to 7.30 and then healthy eating from 7.30 to eight and then like math skills at uh, eight to 8.30. And then they can hop on and off and get the information they need. That's okay, it still counts, right? Or if you're having um, grade level activities, lay out the agenda, first grades this time to fifth because the fifth grade parents don't wanna sit through first through fourth presentations. They wanna get the information they need and get on with their day. So I think that's a great 
thing. And being responsive, just, you know, following up with the emails. Um, usually the 48 hour rule is a good rule. We try to use that at New York State. And sometimes you mess up. Sometimes you don't get into 48 hours and say, I'm sorry, you've been really busy. I'm, you know, I really want to hear from you. Um, you know, please forgive me and then go on. It's okay, but you know, try to be as responsive as you can and also make time and space at the end of your meeting so they can have time to talk to you. What is, what, what's important to them? Um, what do they have questions on? You know, let them have time. Cause if you're like, here's our meeting, here's our agenda, blah, 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 done. They don't get to say anything. It's not feeling like they're a part of your PTA. And then going to innovate it. So I'm just looking down at my phone to keep track of time. Okay, we have nine minutes. Integrated. So going beyond one time events, kind of linking things together. So like, for example, you could do like Brookside Cares and then Brookside Cares about art. And you can have an art event. Brookside Cares about the environment and do like a recycling event. Or uh, what was the other? Oh, Brookside PTA explores, you're exploring, what are you exploring? A bunch of different things. We're exploring space if we're doing a science unit. There's tons of ideas you can, just kind of broaden it. Um, putting the T in the, in the PTA. Teachers are so important to the PTA. And they, they are an equal part of us. Um, and when we work together, it's, it's the best outcome. And so asking the teachers, hey, what do you want the parents to know? Because guess what? They're trying to engage the parents too, just as much as you are. And you're all probably a little frustrated because it's hard. Um, so ask them, like, you know, if you have a teacher that's, you know, trying a new project, say, would you like to come to our PTA meeting? And like for the first 15 minutes, would you like to speak? You could do it virtually. And then they have, you know, more than one parent gathered and hopefully, um, they have a couple, you know, a bunch of parents and they can talk to them and disseminate the information at all at the same time. Say, can we put something out in our newsletter to help you? Or what do you need? What do you need us to do? And link it to the, what they're learning. Um, for like example, for a like fall festival, link it to something that in, in the sciences. Like, so I had a fall festival and I had, a, I made a slingshot. And so we were like guessing how far pumpkins would go and trying to, you know, hypothesize how long a small pumpkin would fly, if it would reach the other end of the property, or if it would, you know, hit in the parking lot or the median in the divider. They love that. Um, make it a little sciencey. And if you don't know what to do, here's a great thing. Ask your teachers and say, we want to add a learning component or maybe a reading component into this. We're not sure how, could you help us, you know? And maybe they can say, oh, we're too busy because of this, but you know, maybe they know somebody else that could help you. So just ask. Um, also ask the principals as if they can put like um, in the newsletter, little tips for how the parents could help their kids when they come home for different projects. Because maybe you're learning a unit about something. Parents don't always know what to say. We don't know what questions they ask which is obvious when our kids come home and they're like, how is school? Fine. What did you do? Nothing. Um, we're, it's, those open-ended questions are not intuitive to us. So help us help you by giving them some just suggestions about what they can talk about with their kids or what they could maybe do at home to reinforce the lesson because that's not always evident to us. And then the last one is being impactful. So help them develop knowledge and skills. Um, give them information. Um, for example, like um, Amy Heisick was uh, our educational coordinator was saying, oh, we should do some videos about science experience, experiments that you can do at home with stuff that you have at home. Because you know, if you're not in that mindset, if you're not a science teacher or you know, a craft doing a craft at home, with stuff that you have at home, you don't know. So point that out to parents, help them. Let's see, um, have a resource document of things that they can look for. Like, because sometimes we blast it out on social media. We're like, oh, this, this museum's having a virtual tour. This zoo's having a virtual tour and this is happening. And if you wanna learn how to do this, go here. But parents are overwhelmed. It's too much information. So putting it in one place so they can go back and say, it's a rainy day. My kids are driving me up the wall. 
click, I can go on this museum tour that they would love, or we can learn about dinosaurs in this video. That's helpful because it's all in one place. And then measuring your success. Sometimes we get caught up in numbers and dollar signs, right? And we can't really do that anymore because things are just harder with COVID. So here's the thing, measuring success in COVID in PTA, are you giving people something that they can take home and use? Like I always think whenever we're doing something and Kyle is always like, and your homework, and probably her homework for this workshop would be like, and your homework is to find out what your district is doing for family engagement. And so that's your homework, that's your takeaway. Um, what are people taking away from your events? Are they, did they learn something? Was it useful to them? Or could they tell someone else? Would they be excited to tell someone else, say, oh, I found this really out. You should check out that video because I was on that workshop and the Zoom and it was so helpful and you should really watch that because that's awesome. Because that's also getting the word out about how valuable it is about what you do. And also model things like have things like um, opportunities to practice and interact. So you could do like, um, if they have, if you have a parent portal, you could do a night where you're like helping them. Everybody get out your phones and we're going to do this. We're going to get you logged in. We're going to get you to see where your kids' grades are. We're going to get you to see where the bus schedules are. And people will be like, oh, that's where that was. I couldn't find that. Or, you know, you can help those people that really have trouble with technology. Um, you could also do it over Zoom. That might be a little more frustrating for you, but you can check that out. Or practice like advocating at like a parent teacher conference or practice like an advocating for an issue um, they don't know how to do that so you can be like well you know here's how to you know ask questions about your parent teacher conference and interact like act out like what you want to see so act out what that would look like and give them examples about how it goes well and how it doesn't because that's always kind of funny but always kind of important. Like, how do you ask your teacher if you know you're overwhelmed and you know you want want to ask them, but you're angry or you're frustrated? How's the best way to phrase that so it doesn't come across and the teacher can respond? And then have them practice, have them do breakout rooms and practice through different scenarios. So you're giving them skills and developing so they can talk and so a lot of times at parent teacher conferences, they're like, do you have any questions? And you're like, uh, I don't know, because I just got a lot of information and I, I can't even process it. And I don't know what questions to ask. Give them a list of what they should ask, you know, and what might be helpful. And what might they take into the meeting to help them in that moment? Because when you're hearing maybe your kid's not doing as well as you thought, and he's on the certain percentage, like the eighth percentile, your emotions kick in. And it's really hard to think rationally at that point. So this is a list of the resources, the, the National PTA and the Family Engagement in ESSA is, let me just get the highlighter. It's this one down here. Whoops, that's not the right one. Let me try this, laser pretty. It's this one right here, the Family Engagement in New Law. This is talking points right here. This is um, our page. National has a Center for Family Engagement. That's really helpful. And the last thing I wanted to show you is just to thank you. Um, if you have any questions or you'd like to share your PTA family engagement story, please contact me at my email. I'd love to give you a shout out. I'd love to share your story with other people so they could do it because sometimes people just don't know what to do and they hear somebody else's story and they're like, well, maybe we can't do all that, but I could do a little bit part of this. And I just want to thank you because you took the time out to come to convention when you could be doing other things. And I really appreciate that you joined me on this workshop. I thank you for your leadership and I thank you for taking this on in the in a really challenging year. Um, but your kids need you and you got this. So stay healthy, stay safe for your family. And I hope that you have a great year. And I just really, really, really appreciate all that you do for us. All right, well take it easy. And if you have any questions, let me know. And let me stop sharing and I will say goodbye. Okay, bye guys.